This is Unscripted Coding, and welcome to another episode. Today, we have something pretty awesome planned. I have with me my trusty MetaQuest VR headset, which seems to be a pretty popular topic with you guys. But before I jump into what we're doing, I want to share with you Nefertari Journey to Eternity. This is directly related to what we're going to try and build, but it is an app on the Steam store that you can download. It's free, and you can put it into any computer desktop-based VR headset. And the idea is you can go into a tomb and experience it full VR, one of the most beautiful tombs in Egypt, and you're going to be able to walk around, experience it as if you were there, be able to take in the scale, take in the tour, take in the steps, all of that to take a look. Now, if you're anything like me and you love National Geographic documentaries or History Channel, you would have seen, when you were younger, items like these. 3D scanners that just look really expensive, look really bulky, and, and they do these amazing scans of pyramids, of tombs, of, of geographic features. And it, it's just something that's been on my mind, thinking when I was younger, it, it would be so cool if we can do that. Well, fast forward maybe 15 years later now, yes, it is part of consumer electronics, albeit still at the high end, but if you take some of Apple's latest devices, the iPad Pro, for example, some of their latest iPhone models, they have included a LiDAR scanner with their camera array. They're using it to uh, measure how long light takes to reflect from objects, really as a depth sensor. And we can use that to create really good, quick 3D models. Now, let's be honest here. It's not cheap. I have a standard iPad Air doesn't include the LiDAR scanner, takes about a thousand, a little more than a thousand dollars to get an iPad Pro. So entering the realm of consumer electronics, but not quite there yet. And we'll talk about some of the limitations as well. It's not quite the same as this machine right here. But nevertheless, iPad Pros are fairly prolific. I was able to borrow one fairly easily and just play around with it. So I use this app called 3D Scanner App, not the most creative name, but it had some amazing, amazing results. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get to, I didn't get to borrow it completely for months on end. So I just have some recorded footage that I'm gonna share with you right here. I went over to my local grocery, a Safeway, and just started scanning their shelves. Now take a look at, at the shelf here. It's, I chose it specifically because I don't see very many of this type of scanning in, on YouTube or on, on the web. Most of them go into this really boring office room, basically four walls and fairly clean. Makes for, very, makes for a very easy scan. But if you take a look, there are nooks and crannies, there are cans, there are square boxes, different shapes, different different challenges, and I wanted to see how it comes out. And what we're doing here right now is we're scanning with the advanced LiDAR mode. At the very bottom, you can see a couple controls. Max depth allows you to control how far you look. So I don't want to peek over the shelf and capture, say, the, uh, the ceiling, the back walls. I just really want things within two meters. The resolution is set at 10 millimeters, which is not super fine. It's a centimeter, but um, it can get finer. It can go all the way down to five millimeters. I'm scanning cans and boxes. I didn't need such a fine resolution, but even at five millimeters, you're not going to capture something uh, like, like a little plastic figurine or statue. You're going to be looking at scanning rooms, scanning locations. You're not going to try and get little bits of keys, pens, small objects. It also means that it's not 
perfectly accurate. So let's set some expectations here. It's not going to come out looking like, looking like, you know, per professional scans done on National Geographic. You're going to get a pretty good model, but it's not going to be perfect. Probably don't want to use it for academic studies. But what I'm going to do is take this object, throw it into our VR headset so we can relive the exciting experience of walking around in a Safeway aisle. You can see right now that as you scan, it's turning purple so you know what you've scanned. You want to get in the nooks and crannies. You want to scan from underneath, from above, from left and right, because, you know, a camera of a figure, you only get the frontal view. You need to see the left and right to see all the gaps, all the giffle view of it. Now, I'm not going to go watch this video much longer, but um, we're just going to get to the end here where you t it does take a few minutes to process a video, but once you do, you get an amazing object for you to look at. And take a look here at the results. Let's go pause it right here. You can see some of it is perfect. Some of it has been flattened. Some of these cans are stretched. But overall, on a quick scan, this was maybe a couple minutes, you are getting a fantastic product, I have to say. And I'm sure you can fiddle with the settings to get it better. So, for example, finer resolution, higher confidence. You may want to take your time to really slowly move. But I was at Safeway. I was getting weird stares and possibly people calling security on me. But I wanted to get out of there not to disturb too many people for too long. Once you get the scan, though, you can click the share button way at the bottom here, at the bottom right, and you can export it into an STL file. So you can 3D print it, you can export it to an object file, a couple other formats as well. So you can actually import it for different reasons. Today, we want to put it into Unity. So I have here right now Unity. You may want to go back to my previous video, just search up that Christmas VR scene. But we talked about how we might import objects into Unity. We had to deal with the hands, the controllers, all of that. I, I just copy and pasted the last version of my Christmas scene into and renamed it into Grocery Scene 2022. And we're going to stick this object in and hopefully it's going to be a fairly simple process. So I'm going to turn this on. And I'll be right back. So I've done two really quick things. Uh, first things first, I reopened the project right here. And you can see the Christmas trees, the presents, and so on. This is not a grocery store aisle. But I also just quickly took a peek at our file on the computer. And you can see how it looks over here. Uh, and the controls are just a little bit different on the Windows 3D object viewer. But you can see some of the distortions are gaps here and there. I was more or less focusing on the other side. So I'm hoping it looks a little bit better on this side. And take a look here. There are less gaps, and you can see the objects inside in the nooks. Uh, over here, I don't know what that is, but it looks a bit uh, mushed. And at the bottom, again, a bit grayish, probably just capturing on the edges, but I think overall, this shelf right here, dead center, looks pretty decent. This is probably where I focused my time on being very careful capturing top, bottom, left, right. Uh, I also wanted to show you very quickly here that uh, there's a JPEG file to this texture, and you can see all the pieces. I have no clue how this actually all funnels back together but uh, you, you see all the pieces here and there that form this 3D object. 
So the goal is to take this, throw it into this project, export it very quickly into our VR headset, and take a walk around the Safeway aisle. Okay, so I am building right now. Uh, it's attached to my headset, so it should be running uh, right on the headset fairly soon. But I have to say, it was a lot easier than I thought it would be. You just had to create a folder, which you saw me do, and I'll show you in a second once this project is built, and drag and drop the files. So I didn't want to share much okay right here uh there we go you have your image this is the textures and this is the mtl file i think this file is what tells you the texture where it attaches to and then your object file is just the 3d object itself and so once you have these three files close this off you just drag and drop now I took out all the Christmas trees. Uh, I really probably should take out the ground as well, but we'll leave it in. Uh, my, my goal really was not to create all of Safeway, but I wanted to know how I can take the iPad model and throw it right in. And it seems super simple. I come under assets, I just create a new folder and I drag the three files in, and when you move the object file onto the scene, you get you get the the file that you scanned in, the three D object you scanned in. Now, what I also appreciate is I notice I, at least by my eye, this is true to life scale. When you compare to a tree that I was resizing, this is about accurate. When I stand here, I'm going to see roughly the Cheerios at the right level, the, the cans of coffee and beans and so on at the right levels. Okay, so I am going to strap on a headset, change over here. So I ran into a couple errors, and I think the quickest way to do this is just to restart, given that all I've done is drag the file. So I'm going to redo, delete this whole folder, restart again, because I know the Christmas one actually works, but for whatever reason, this one is just freezing. Okay, so here we have it. Um, hope you can see me. We got above. Okay. Nice and center. Uh, we have my hands. And of course, I, I haven't done anything with this object, but you can take a look. And I, I think they downgraded the quality of the images because if you look at the quality of the scan from the computer, you should be able to make up that this is a Lipton green tea. I guess you could kind of squint and get your eyes on it. But you should be able to read most of these labels. And I think they kind of screwed it up for me. But as I look, I, I have to say, this is, this is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to stand up right now. And this is exactly, this is perfectly the right size. Uh, I can definitely peek over and I can reach the top of the objects. This is exactly where my eye level was. And then if you take a peek, you can see I didn't do a perfect scan. You can peek right through that hole. Um, and also, uh, I think the reason why, why I screwed up is when I was deleting all these trees, and, and and Christmas trees and the giant Christmas tree up there. Uh, I deleted, there was a, there was a camera here. This is where a person would normally fun. And there should have been a lighting 
source right here somewhere. And I, I must have deleted those, which caused an issue. Anyways, take a look. Um, it's not perfect by any means. These things are tagged. I think how we could capture it better than having this weird thing right here is if I actually uh, had, say, my iPad and, and did a 360 around these tabs. And it's a lot, a lot easier if I had an iPhone rather than an iPad. Again, if you take a look, I didn't do a good scan here. It, it, there are gaps, there are gaps over here. But overall, it looks pretty good. And then if I turn around, you're going to see uh, my lesser scan of square boxes, uh, cereal boxes. Um, I have very limited room in this office, so I'm not going to walk too far on either way. But, of course, you can walk, and you could spend a half hour trying to scan every nook and cranny of a safe way. I think this is pretty cool, because overall it turned out pretty well. I... The quality of these images, I think, got downgraded, and we should be looking at, and I've lost probably. We should be looking at, ah, okay, uh, I'm going to swap back, but let me finish my thought. I, I think we should be looking at what kind of uh, resolution these things import into Unity for. It feels to me like they must have uh, tried to save some space because this is like a 40 megabyte file for you to, to import in. Okay, this is just going to hurt my head if I keep going. Before I call it quits, I just wanted to show you guys, when you click the actual texture file, you can see that there are some compressions going. I just quickly moved it to a 16,000 max size and to use high quality. Oh, I can do no compression at all. And you can see the quality of, of the, the pictures changing quite quickly. I'm going to shove this back into my headset and end our video one after one more quick tour. Okay, so uh, this is this is it. Looks a bit clear. Uh, still not perfect, of course. I note the double S over there. Vector seems to have some problems with tracking, but uh, you can see that's looking pretty good. And with that, I am going to end it. I just think there are huge opportunities here for us to uh, improve, to, to create new worlds, and this is going to be a really cool tool. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. Um, thumbs up. Subscribe if you hated it, leave a comment, but uh, tune in next week when we try yet another project. Thanks for watching.